Hey folks, I'm Funky Monkey and welcome to another short episode where I'll be discussing a very serious anime about a very serious subject. War. They say that war never changes, that it is always a senseless waste of resources and human lives. And to some extent, this is true. But war has also created great art, great poetry, and to some extent, war has inspired the anime Gundam Wing. But before we get to that, let's talk about the Gundam franchise in general, and its creator, Yoshiyuke Tamino, in particular. Yoshiyuke Tamino was born in November of 1941, and got his start in anime at the tender age of 21 at the studios of the influential master, Osamu Tezuka. However, as such things tend to go, he and a number of other creators struck out on their own with the creation of Sunrise Studios in 1972. Whereas Tezuka's Mushi Productions flowed from Tezuka's pen alone, Sunrise Studios were set up to be more democratic, although their focus was much narrower. Specifically, Sunrise decided to plough the furrow of robot anime. The nickname Kill 'em All Tamino was first coined from the ending to the 1977-78 mecha anime Zambot 3, where a number of the protagonists sacrificed themselves to destroy the villain of the piece. This nickname would be cemented with the mainly 1980 anime Space Runaway Idiom. Though in the series itself, the better part of the cast survives the final episode, a double bill of movies was released in 1982, the second of which depicts an incredibly bleak fate for the protagonists, the antagonists, their homeworlds, and indeed some nearby innocent worlds. This would later become the inspiration for the bleak ending of Neon Genesis Evangelion. The first Gundam anime, and the birth of what is called the real robot genre, was Mobile Suit Gundam, which ran from April 1979 to January 1980. The basic plot revolves around the battleship White Base and one Amuro Rei, whom fate thrusts into the role of hero when he discovers the Earth Federation's final weapon against the attacking space principality of Xeon, the RX-78 Gundam. Initially unpopular, the show was saved thanks to a shrewd licensing deal with Bandai, who began to release plastic model kits based on some of the mobile suit designs of the show. These kits, which would come to be known as Gunpla, took off in a big way, and almost single-handedly revived the fortunes of Gundam as a brand and as a potential franchise. The original story of Mobile Suit Gundam continues in the sequels Zeta Gundam and Double Z Gundam. In fact, the better part of the Gundam franchise to date has taken place in the Universal Century timeline, with only a few notable exceptions taking place outside that timeline. Gundam Wing, or New Mobile Report Gundam Wing, to give it its full title, is one such exception. It ran for 49 episodes between 1995 and 1996, and is also notable for being the first Gundam series to air on the original incarnation of Cartoon Network's Toonami. This also includes the UK edition of Toonami, where it first came to my attention. Being that Gundam Wing weighs in at 49 episodes of around 25 minutes each, we won't be going into detail. Suffice it to say then, that the year is after Colony 195, and Operation Meteor sends five Gundams, mobile suits made from Gundanium alloy, to Earth to take secret revenge for the assassination of a pacifist leader of the orbital colonies. However, this is also the story of Relina Dalian, who is in fact the heir to the peacecraft monarchy of the Sank Kingdom, a supposed Central European nation that was destroyed by the Earth Sphere Alliance military. Over the course of the series, we see Relina grow from helpless side character to monarch of her own nation, to queen of the entire world at one point, before finally settling into her role as... well... I won't spoil everything for you. Also heavily featured is the dual identity of Zex McKees and Milliard Peacecraft, who pilots the Tall Geese mobile suit, which is said to have been the progenitor for the Gundam suits. Later on, he inherits the Epion Gundam, 
which uses the powerful Zero OS. The Zero OS improves pilot reaction time and combat efficacy. However, it has the side effect of sending lesser pilots completely insane to the point of becoming suicidally reckless. Only two people are known to be able to handle the madness of the Zero OS. As a drama, Gundam Wing is slow, being that when the mobile suits are off screen, there is a lot of political manoeuvring, philosophising on the nature of pacifism and the horror of war, or what I can only describe as poetic waffle about the beauty of dueling. And yet, somewhere in all this mess, there is still plenty of room for characterization, as we meet Broken Bird Hero Yui. Cocky, supposed to be American, but don't quote me on that. Duo Maxwell, other Broken Bird and friend to the animals, Troa Barton, Wooby Destroyer of Mobile Suits, and the blondest Arab I've ever seen, Katra Raberba winner, and baffling Chinese stereotype, Wu Fei Chang. The overarching plot itself lurches from transcontinental Earth to the orbital colonies and back again, as the five pilots are acting for the colonies, or disowned by the colonies, or under order of execution, until they become completely independent of both sides by the final few episodes, and not everyone gets home safely. And it does suffer from the old complaint of uneven pacing, though perhaps it was meant less for the modern phenomenon of the marathon viewing, and more for the slow, deliberate trickle of the weekly episode format. Though even accounting for this, if you're looking for a non-stop thrill ride of giant robot action, you're in the wrong subgenre to begin with. No, this is a cerebral rumination on military aggression, the love of war for the sake of pushing people around, and why the best warriors are actually the most compassionate. And in the end, while wars may not lead to peace in and of themselves, Gundam Wing argues that the public's desire not to go to war might be the biggest factor there is in a lasting peace. So what do I think of Gundam Wing? Well, being that it has slow pacing, yes. But it also does have its moments of genuine robot action. And the characters, even some of the supposed villains, for the most part, are likeable. But yeah, if this was a longer episode, I probably would be putting new mobile report Gundam Wing into the House of Love. Anyway, I've been Funky Monkey, and this has been another whole shorty. So long!